Okay, I'll make a start. <laughs> It's great to be here. Um, we, in recent months, we've been all over Europe and seen shows in Luxembourg, Germany, and France, and places like that. So it's nice to actually be in a place where it's a 40-minute drive and it's easy to get to, and we don't have to get on an aeroplane and things like that. So uh, thanks very much for inviting us. I really appreciate that. And um, I know, I know, an event like this has a lot of hard effort and work put into it and uh, the detail, level of detail has been spectacular um, so thank you very much to Dave and Robert and all the swag guys who have put this on today um, because uh, in 2020 to see the community so strong and held up by youth groups in the UK is, uh, is, is really, really uh, encouraging. And uh, who would have thought, you know, in the late 1990s, that we would have such a resurgence of the Amiga community in the UK in 2020. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing to have these um, that we have shows like this. So, um, I, I'm sure you all know uh, Amiga Kit, but uh, I, I've seen some guys today who are newcomers to the scene. Uh, we were established, if you don't know, we were established in 2004 by a UK-based company. Uh, we exclusively serve the Amiga market, so we don't, we don't do anything else apart from Amiga stuff. Uh, we manufacture Amiga stuff, we distribute to other resellers across the world. Uh, we're re retailer ourselves and we do hardware and software development. Uh, 2020's going to be quite a busy year for us. And it's exciting as well, uh, lots of hard work, um, and we've got new hardware and software coming through the channel, uh, which um, I thought I'd share some of the stuff that's coming through with you guys. Uh, the, so, uh, the MegaKit software, uh, who's used a MegaSys in the past? Uh, have you come across Amiga Sys before? It's uh, very similar to Amikit. Uh, it's been around for a long time. 2003 uh, was when it first came out. Uh, the project stalled. Uh, it was done by a Hungarian guy, um, uh, Derry. Uh, the project stalled and we've taken over from, from him. And we're continuing the development of Amiga Sys as a package and modernizing it. Uh, this, this is the screenshot of the latest build. Uh, it will actually run on things like uh, UAE and um, uh, WinUAE, FS, UAE, that type of thing, and Amiga for other laptop. Um, so you can, you can run it on top of that. Um, as I said, it was created in 2003. Uh, it's a complete so software distribution of the Amiga uh, software, so you don't have to go through all the rigmarole of installing your favourite utilities, your favourite libraries and files and things like that. It's all ready to go. So it's one big package. It requires the original workbench disk, so you just feed it with the workbench disks and it will set itself up. Uh, we're now the, the owner of it, but um, the original project uh, manager, Dairy, uh, we're, it's completely free in the to download, but we've got a donations button on the, the website. So he will be the recipient of any ongoing donations um, and he's helping out with the project. Uh, so we've replaced all the old scripts and uh, we've got a nice wizard for Amiga Sys now. It takes you through, it uh, auto installs, click, 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 and away, away to go. Uh, this is the installation wizard. Um, we've developed a, a new Amiga Dock system. It's all based on Classic, so there's new Classic Dock. Uh, we've, there's new data types, there's new fonts, new files. Uh, we've got the updater which we use for our small projects that we've now ported across to OS3, and that will be in Amiga Sys, and that will keep your system all updated so it will throw out all the files, check for any, any ones that have to be downloaded from your server. And update, it, update them. 
Uh, the other project that you might have seen this uh, advertise is uh, in AK data types. Uh, we purchased these off Andreas Climate, and uh, there hasn't been, you might have seen them on AmiNet, uh, there hasn't been any updates since 2008 on AK data types. Uh, so, uh, since we've taken them over a couple of months ago, we've, we've upgraded them steadily. And uh, we've gotten to the level now that they are the most advanced data types on the Amiga. Uh, they consist of a GIF data type, a, GIF, a JFIF, FIF, which is JPEG data type, a TIFF data type, and a PNG data type. And you can install those on your classic system, and the Amiga, as standard, doesn't understand GIFs, JPEGs, PNGs, things like that. So it will actually uh, understand uh, these once they're installed on the, on the uh, workbench. So uh, we've upgraded it um, just 12 days ago, actually, the independent JPEG group, uh, upgraded the libjpeg. To version 9D, and uh, we've upgraded AK data types as well to 9D. So uh, it basically means that the J JPEG support of the Amiga is bang up to date as, as mainstream platforms go. Uh, we've also got the, li uh, the latest Zlib, we've got the latest uh, PNG libraries in there. So um, it's, the, it's the most re uh, advanced and to date data type system on, on the Amiga. And this is how we're going to distribute it. It's got a nice printed manual, and uh, it'll come on floppy disk, it'll come as a download, it'll come on CD, whatever your preference is. So uh, it is quite large, so it'll probably be full, full floppy disks. Like we're, we're developing a lot of new hardware as well in 2020. Uh, the first, the first uh, card that we've got is our new RAM expansion. It's got, um, it's got a number of features. Uh, now, the reason that we decided to develop this is because, I don't know about you, but if you go on eBay and things like that, people are selling random pressures for about 100 pounds, and uh, it seems an awful lot of money for just a simple 8 meg RAM expansion. So we thought we'd, we'd do something that's quality hardware, but at an affordable price and that's readily available, and that's the other problem with the classical media market. Things come in, they're not readily, readily available, and then they disappear out the door, and then the prices, then you have price inflation going through the roof. So this card is 8 megabytes of fast memory, perfect for a WHD load, and I'm sure everyone is a WHD load gamer here. Um, I noticed none of the other expansions have the FPU socket. Now the FPU socket's quite useful. You can put a 40 megahertz FPU, they're very, very low cost, and speed up all the maths processing uh, capability on your media. It's got a 4 meg load, a 5.5 and an 8 meg load. Now, you probably know that if you go to an 8 meg load, it takes out the PCM CIA port on the 1200. Uh, so you can't use anything on the side. So we've implemented a 5.5 meg load, which is used in the range of memory. So you can you can actually use 4 meg and 1.5 of the range of space, and it still will work with the PCMCIA sockets on the side of your Amiga. And we've added a second clock port because you can never have enough clock ports. Can you? <laughs> it's one of those things in life, you know. Um, optional real time, real time clock, which we sell. And the other bit of new hardware that we've got coming through is the buffered interface. This is actually available today from our, our shop, and you can pick one up. It uh, allows you to, um, uh, once again, the, the buffered interfaces, they were readily available. We were selling them back 16 years ago, for, uh, and they were readily available. Uh, they haven't been available for a while, the price has rocketed, so we've, we've done a new production run. We're going to sell sell this for £35, so it's a very low pr price. Uh, incidentally, the, uh, I didn't tell you the price of the RAM card, but uh, that's going to be 59 59 yeah, sorry. Should have said that. Um, so uh, we're looking at, uh, th this is £35, this is a uh, four, four device buffered interface. Um, it's got some unique features you probably uh, will be interested in. 
Um, on the side of it, this is it, is an expansion header, a 22 pin expansion header, and you can fit to a ga optional Gale chip at a later date and have PIO up to PIO4 speeds, so it'll enhance your hard drive uh, transfer times, read, read write transfer times. Uh, you might have seen a similar product to this about five, six years ago called IDFix Express, which was quite similar. So um, we think this is going to come in at a good price point and it'll give you much faster hard drive access and allow you to add lots of devices to your 1200. So uh, there's a couple of other features we added on it. Um, you know when you buy these CF cards and the, the LEDs don't work properly and they're always on. It's really annoying, isn't it? Uh, we've added in software and uh, firmware that you can actually emulate the hard drive LED. So uh, it fixes all those annoying uh, CF card adapters. Uh, you've got the PIO4 level as well, so you've got really fast speeds, and it's fully buffered, so it's fully safe for your 1200 or 600. And this is the software that goes with it. Uh, so you can see, you can set up everything in the preferences, um, and you can switch the LED on or off the emulation mode for each channel. Uh, the next problem we're doing as well for the 2000 uh, is a RAM expansion that follows on from our Zorum 4000, if uh, you can remember that from about uh, six years ago. Uh, this gives it 8 meg fast memory so that if you want to, if you want to um, add extra memory to 2000, give it a bit of loving, you know, for WHD loads and that sort of thing, that this is ideal. Once again, this is going to be a very cheap, uh, low cost uh, card at about £59 as well. Uh, with the administrators to Amiga Org, um, who's got an Amiga Org account here? Who's, uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so you might have noticed we've done a lot of work to the Amiga Org site in recent times, um, and that's continuing. Uh, the software upgrades and the patches are continuing, um, and we've overhauled the software, so it's a lot more friendly to use now. The old, the old software was a bit archaic, you know. And uh, just for fun, I don't know who's, how long anyone's been on Amigorg for, how many decades, but this is Amigorg in 1997, so I thought I'd go back in the archives. It looks a bit sparse, doesn't it? Um, this is part of Amigorg called the Amiga Development Network, which we are also resurrected and updated. This is what it was like in 1996. And this is what it looks like now when you go online. So it's got brand new software, software patches, and uh, um, it's all, all up to date. So, so you, you haven't got any issues there with uh, security and things like that. So, uh, yeah, well, I've said, who's, who's a member of Omega.org? Um, and uh, any questions on my presentation? No? <laughs> Very shy. <laughs> okay, well, if you, have any, <laughs> if you have any questions, then please come and see me. So oh, I just asked about the Clapper ID. Yep, yep. So you don't need to be using a CF card. Yeah, yeah uh, most CF cards are pretty modern these days, and they can do PIO 3 or PIO 4. So, yeah, that will, that will increase the speed on that. Yeah. Any further questions? Presumably, yes. Yeah, yeah um, and, but you have to be careful with the SDs because they're different ratings and different speed ratings, so you've got to be careful which ones you go for. Mm. We're noticing a, like an uptake in membership for this user group. Are you noticing an uptake in sales, for example? Yeah, I, don't any, I don't want any figures, but I mean, <laughs> are you noticing that? Anyway. Yeah, um, when we started in 2004, the media was in the UK now. The Mika was very much in the decline. People were putting them in rubbish bins and <laughs> throwing them out and giving them away for free, or you know. Um, and then, then you saw like twenty pounds, thirty pounds, twelve hundreds. 
These days you're seeing, seeing 300 pound to <laughs> with nothing on them. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and they're usually sunshine yellow as well. And, and, uh, so uh, likewise with our business, it has been cyclical. You know, in 2004, uh, demand wasn't much there, but we set up because, if, if you remember back then, uh, power computing had, had exited the scene. You had people like iTech, which we took over the stock in 2005. Um, and continued the iTech products. And uh, these days, there has been an uplift. Um, so the cycle has gone, gone in the positive direction. So yeah, I think, I think it goes hand in hand with this new generation of people coming through, isn't there? And um, a lot of people, a lot of people uh, I've seen in shows uh, have left the Amiga and come, come back, which is encouraging for all of us. And, uh, uh, it breeds new life and energy into the marketplace. Do you have a uh, favourite peripheral over time? Uh, I was like the action replay cartridge. What was your favourite uh, from the uh, Amiga generation? Yeah, for classic though. Yeah, um, oh, um, really? yeah cl uh, I, I think the, the, the best one probably would be the CF cards uh, expansion on the side, you know. For, for putting in CF cards, um, it's not it's not that exciting, but it's probably the most uh, useful one I have to say for the 1200. Unlocked, unlocked so so much potential in the 1200. Uh, apart from that, uh, when, when I first had my 1200, the Nilla 1200, I, I think uh, new life was breathed, breathed into it when a simple hard drive went in. <laughs> I could never go back to pre pre hard drive days. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they, they're not very exciting, those things, but you couldn't live without them. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? No? <laughs> okay. All right, put your hands together.